the real session. Friends, welcome to this series on best practices and procurements. So here I'm going to talk about three pillars. The best practices, procurement, and the third is I will talk about excellence part. Now the best practices mean people have tried somewhere. You see that I'm in IT sector, let's say I'm in auto sector, whatever are former sectors. And I find my KPIs are not doing well. And then I see the performance indicators of other companies in the same sectors, they're doing better than me. So naturally we have to learn what, what do we need to make changes in our environments so that we can improve our performance. So any tools, any methods, any system which has worked well within your own domain or within your own sectors in some companies, they become your best practices. So for the best practices, you need to know the benchmarks. Second aspect on procurement. I think that I touched in the beginning. Procurement is also evolving. While the best practice where I'm going to talk today is going to limit up to procurement. I'm not going to talk about logistics and inventory management, but the term procurement has expanded. So maybe in the future, I'll be calling as best practice in supply management, a procurement and supply chain. So that's the term is going to change. But for the time being, I'm focusing only on the procurement part. The third thing comes up is behind all this, the purpose is achieve excellence. So with this friends, I go to the next ones. I mean, I'm just skipping my introduction. I think most of us, we know each other. Now agenda what we kept for today is understanding the concept of best practices, the role of benchmarking, procurement maturity model, and center of excellence. Now here maturity model means some companies who are in the same sector as you are, they have reached the center of excellence. Some may be at the very operative level. Some have reached the center of excellence. So we'll be walking through that. What makes them matured? What makes them to be center of excellence? What makes them world class? And once they are the world class and they are within the same sector as you are, there's a lot to learn from them. So those practices we'll talk around. And while explaining this, I'll take a real case. It's a real case we did for one of the companies. So you will really understand this is a hands-on thing which I'll be talking around key gaps and transforming the vision to reality. Now you have got the vision. I want to be the best in this. I want to improve my lead time. I want to cut down my cost. I want to be cost effective. I want to be efficient. Whatever you have made the vision based on the real benchmark from others, then you want to transform that vision into the reality part. How do we go about it? So this whole game is all about transformation. And then in this transformation, obviously, we'll have to learn a little bit more about the best practices. Keep in mind, one size does not fit all. Your organization may have a different organization style. may have different tools around. So those practice, best practices may have to be customized. Last but not the least is implementation, implement, a roadmap for implementation. We could have wonderful reports. We could have wonderful idea from consultants. The biggest problem comes on the ground. Since I'm talking with my 40 years experience on the ground, when you want to implement, I've done for many companies on the ground, I've done for the UNs, implementing in 200 countries. So there I find is the most learning game comes up. I'll try to share my some experience here and there. So in short, the agenda's objective is accelerate your journey towards world-class performance. So we expect that most of the companies they should become the world-class companies. That's our agenda for today. Again, trying to explain a little bit on the word best practices means. As I explained in the upfront, best practice is defined as a method, technique, which has been accepted as a superior to others. There might be many choices for everything, but what works in one company may not work in another company because culturally you may be different. Each company has a different DNA. 
So depending on what works in one may not work in another. So keep that factor in mind. There is more desired and is able to achieve the more desired outcome. If they are able to achieve the desired outcome which you want, so that becomes the best practice for you. Now let me also touch a little bit uh, extension of the best practices. What was best practices five years back may not be the best practice today. Keep in mind, regardless of any industries, I'm in touch with many industries, whether auto, pharma, with whom I deal a lot, even IT companies, and IT much more, I would call it, is very fluid. So nothing is best practices. I remember one company we were working in the past. In the past, we came up with one solution five years back. Today, we are talking of digitization, digitization. The whole, the best practices have changed. Another thing also I want to say around is procurement function is also evolving. Your responsibilities are changing. I still have to see a good company where somebody says my job description is same what was 10 years back. The job description is also evolving. Your expectations are never changing. As I said to you, when procurement is evolving to become supply management, to become supply chain management, the role is expanding. If I go 40 years back, your role was only 10% or 50% of the whole spend. Today, you are covering 80% of the sales revenue. So it's certainly that means you control a big purse of the company. Your role has changed and you have become a very important function. In the past, as I was said to you, it was very simple. So when I started my careers, I would say the role was a damn simple up to 2000, I could call around. Just cut the low price, cut the price, that's all. If I'm able to cut the price, ensure the continuity around, I was a wonderful procurement person. But in today's world, it has become much more complex. There are much more dimensions which affect the performance of your department. So when there are too many dimensions, too many drivers, which helps you to achieve the best performance, the function has become complex. So that means the best practices, what were there, they also need to evolve around. So what we will try is we'll like to walk through these best practices to become the world class. And when I'm talking the world class, I'll walk through with you a real case, which we did some time back. Procurement is transition, which I again emphasized earlier. We all agree, I hope. Procurement is a profession. I think I ask this question all the time. In the past, procurement was not a profession. You never need any certification. You never need any degrees in this. Anybody who's not able to fit somewhere else, people were shifted to procurement. Procurement used to be always a backyard office. Used to be a basement office. But today it is very important. Since you are controlling a big purse of the company, it has become moved from reactive to strategic function. So when I talk of strategic, obviously we're talking of measuring the performance part, we're talking of total cost of ownership, we're talking of greening part. Recently I attended one workshop, we were there, it was organized through the United Nations. How to even the bad, how to make the packaging material of pharma company as a biodegradable, which adds value to your process, supply strategies, and becoming moving towards value chain. So are we able to add values? It is not the price alone. In the past, I know even still many companies in India, at least I find procurement is subordinated to operations, our finance function. While it has become so important, but still they are subordinated to them. The key focus in the past was price, price, and prevention of shutdowns. That means you become a good getter. But the, now the role is changing. As I said, the function is moving from tactical to strategic. And the broad focus, if I look around now to 2020, which is going to come, we are moving. I know still we are companies struggling with category managements. And the last is becoming value management. This one, again, I hope most of you who have been a science graduates have gone to the science studies around. They know this guy, Albert Einstein. 
And now he is a scientist. What does he say? Doing the same task over and over again and expecting different results. If you don't change your processes, you don't change your tools, you don't change your organization style, and you work people to work like a slaves for 14 to 18 hours, the world is not going to change. So what does Albert Einstein want to hit on this? If you want to have procurement and supply chain organization today and want to be effective, you want to be relevant, you want to be viewed as valued, and you want to be part of the top management. You don't want to be subordinate function. You want your voice should be heard because you are adding value. To accomplish all this, we need strategies and best practice. And obviously, we need to implement them as well. Execution is very important at all. So in short, if I try to churn around various ideas, the good organizations, good benchmarks, good standards, good goals, strategies, qualities. But keep in mind, all of them are having trade-off. You squeeze all of them, all the best practices, then you get the success. I remember the days, if I go even 25, 30 years back, everybody was talking of decentralization. If I got 10 plants, we will talk of decentralization. Today, we are talking of centralization of the cloud. Or should we have a hybrid system? So you need to draw, depending on the DNA of the company, what type of organization, what type of benchmarks. In some company, you want guys, my benchmark is 100% spend has to go through procurement. While in some companies, the DNA is so good, different that they say, guys, no, no, you just take care of this. While hiring of consulting, hiring of consultants, we will take care. So there is different trade-offs around. So we have to take off all the issues. We need to squeeze them and then come up with the success factors around. Now the benchmarking is a beginning. So the benchmarking, you try to compare your organization with another one who are best in class. And try to see the comparison is called the benchmark. You try to look around the various benchmarks. And then you say, guys, okay, how are we doing at this? So these are the one we're talking as represents the best practice in measuring areas and qualities, values, lead time, performance, various areas around. So when it comes to the insights on the benchmarking, understand your current capabilities. You can't read someone else how the others are doing until you know in-house. That means you have to understand your own gaps. If you don't understand your own gaps and you're only looking at some big company, how they do it, and you want to copy that, no. Understand your gaps. Understand their strength around. Understand their benchmarks. And then try to come up with something good solutions around. Assess the performance relative to the business values and strategy. Identify the priorities. Obviously, you might have many gaps. The benchmarks could be running around 40 or 50s. Everything cannot be done in one go. What is the most top priority for you? In one company, it may be X criteria. Organization structure may be the most important. Other companies, still the cost is more important. In the third, they want to get innovative ideas. If I'm an auto company, innovative ideas are more important to me. So it again varies case to case. But to do anything around, there are risks also. So it's not a blind walk around. You identify the areas, but then certainly there are risks as well. You follow one approach. I say, I want to centralize procurement. But keep in mind, there are risks as well. How are you going to mitigate those risks around? I cut down the lead time. I improve the lead time. There may be risk there also. So keep in mind, there are risks. It's a combination of so parameters. So by now, you must have understood procurement is not simple, a clerical function. Procurement has become a strategic function. And for the strategic function, you need a specialized knowledge. So now this is a journey to me. In this journey, you have to plan, you have to manage, and you have to accelerate your performance to become the world class. But these are some of the benchmarks I've tried to put down just to get a feel of it. What are the benchmarks? Procurement is involved in 95% of the spend, 95 plus. 
purchase orders are generated electronically is around. This is what now even the government of India is coming up around. E-procurements, must, mandatory, the new financial rules. They're saying, guys, every purchase orders has to be, every, every tender document has to be posted there. All the bids have to be received electronically around. So these are the becoming the benchmarks now. Certification is required for the staff around. Receive 24 hours training annually around. Are we learning organizations? I come throughout my life careers, starting from Tata, still World Bank, UN, and many private companies in the US. I always believed on the learning organization. People have to be given some hours in a year to spend on learning something. Okay, guys, not taking much time because we are st uh, the document is much bigger. Here I'm trying to talk about word class again, procurements. Some of the dimension I can take around. What is your procurement strategy? Do you have something on guidelines on that? Strategic sourcing. How do I implement it? Because when strategic sourcing is again from top down, the top management has to be committed to this. Some costs are involved around. Restructuring might be required around. Are they supporting it? And if your beginning is failure, then the management is not going to support you. So you need to work it out which are the low-hanging fruits. So once you know the low-hanging fruits and you are successful, you are able to convince the management to go for strategic source. The government process around. Supplier management. How do we manage the supplier? One, how do I do the evaluation of the suppliers? How do I make the eligibility criteria around? I've got tons of supplier. But I need to rationalize those suppliers. Some suppliers are not performing at all. How do I make an exit strategy for them? Information management. Organization is important around. What type of organization is performance management? These are broad things around. So when I said to you in the maturity model, I think this is very important around before I talk of best practices. Further, we start from level one, the very low, the beginner level. Second is the basic level. The next goes to competitive. And then becomes the leader. And the last is the best in class. So when I say the best in class, those are the best practices I'm going to look at. So now if I have to sim simplify these terminologies, I will explain this way. Those who are very reactive type, you send a request to me, I work on it. I'm in the level one. Obviously, you're not going to look at their best practice. There's no best practices per se. Another company is proactive. They don't wait for their acquisitions to come to you. They plan in advance. The third level is success oriented. The chief of the head department, they try to come up with their own ideas to make it success. They have their own vision. They have their own mission. So that's the level three. But the next comes organization oriented. That means I'm not working only within my own firewall. I'm also looking at the vision objectives of the organization. How does it fit with that? How does it link with that? Even when I look as a consultant, sometimes companies, I go around. I look at the wall. Do they have any vision? Do they have any mission statements? Do they have any objectives mentioned around? So if I find nothing is mentioned, that means people are working in isolations. This is how I look at it. The last is what I would call around as a value driven. You might be linking all your vision and this with the organizations, but are you able to achieve the values? Let's say I'm working with the auto company. I was getting my headlamps from X company and Y company. But then I find this company is great. But then another company comes up. Who gives me the headlamp with LED lights? Naturally, it adds my value to the product. Even the price may be a small percentage up, 5% or 10%, but the product gets enhanced. The value of the product goes up. So this is the role procurement people or supply chain people can play a role. So their role is not just buying as per the specs. Their role is also to ensure the product and services which I'm getting, are they adding value to my product? So value to me. So this is where we call the people at the level five. So these are to me are the world-class company. So if I had to improve upon, I'll look at these companies as my role model. 
and try to find my benchmarks, try to see what could be the best practices for me. And this is where if someone needs, we can help you because we have a full research center in New York, sorry, in Arizona called CAPS, which has tie up with Arizona State University, Michigan, MIT. So these people are developing the benchmarks all the time. This is a procurement cycle. So before I talk about the best practice in each one. So I think all of us knows our game, our cycle, our journey. The procurement journey starts from requirements, finding the sources, selecting the vendors, order processing, order monitoring, receipt of goods, invoice verification, payment. Very simple way, I'm sure all of you follow this around. Then this one will come, now people have moved from simple tactical procurement to strategic procurement. So sourcing has become a different function. Buying has become a different function. So buying is purely tactical, operational. Sourcing is purely strategic sourcing. So many of you I know have moved from simple one circle to two circles around. One keeps the money on the table, other keeps money in the bank around. They only put the money in the bank if they're able to follow the guidelines given by the strategic sourcing. This one I thought let me explain a few things around and then I jump to the main subject. Now here I know the strategic sourcing is one, one of the top best practices today. I think we get quite a big request on these things around. Then comes e-procurement. So e-procurement is all about which we call P2P, we call that is more on the transaction side. Strategic sourcing, if I want to cover the whole chain, it becomes S to P. That means from strategies, from sourcing to payments. That's how it looks at that. Okay, now coming back to this subject. So I'll walk through with you the maturity model now. For this maturity model, I've taken up eight broad dimensions around. Now these maturity model, we'll walk through the best practice. What gives you the best practice? What gives you the worst practice? First, we'll talk about organizations, because you know very well, organization plays a key role. That's the key DNA of the organization. Second is the policies. Are the policies up thinking around, forward thinking around? Processes. As I said to you, when I go as a consultant, the first question I ask them, when did they change the process around? If they're not changed for five years, something is wrong. The world has changed and your processes are still older. Something is wrong. That means you're not state of art, a company around. The tools and systems, the technology part, systems part. The next focus is all about talent, talent, talent. We may have wonderful ideas, but if you have no right people, we don't have attraction quotient. We're not able to attract the right people, the smart people into our profession. This cannot move forward. Customers are very important to us. Customers could be in-house. If your supply chain is shorter, your customers are in-house. Could be operation people. Could be sitting people in the, I mean, those who are in the warehouse or inventory management. The customers could be in-house. But if you're dealing the complete supply chain, customer could be the last end of the chain. Suppliers, performance. So I'll walk through with you on the each ones. So this is a real case. I'm just walking through with you. The very first one is organization. Now, organization, there are different maturity drivers. When I talk of maturity, I mean moving from level one to level five. That means at the very basic level to the world class level. So, if you want to be the world class, let's say the CPO business plan. Do we make a plan for this? So, that means if I look at the very, you will find under each maturity driver five headings around. If I look, the, your company has got no procurement business plan exists. If I come and visit your company and say, guys, can you show me the plan for the next years? From 1st April 17 to next years. I know the plans will change. And plans are bound to change. There's no second thought about it. But do we have a plan or not? If we don't plan exist, we work like a firefighting, then certainly you get the lowest level of maturity. So when I say lowest level of maturity means... Forget about the best practice, you have the very low level. The gap is too big. So when I talk of the best practices, 
We have a documented annual business plans developed with the business development, development staff input, purposeful thought, aligned with the visions, aligned with the missions. That gives you the best score at all. So if I had to do the scoring and if I had to find the gap, you can see if I had to give the lowest level one, two, three, four, five, it starts from the place where there was no plan. And the one who gets the world class is the one who has got this. Similarly, I go to the next drivers. See if your mission statement. Do you have any mission statement? I just come and work, that's all. But there's no mission. So no procurement mission statement exists around. Again, a worst practice. The best practice would be you have a documented and current procurement mission exists and department staff can either decide or easily locate for help. Another one, I look at the CPO vision statement. So same story as I talked about the mission. Structure. What type of structure do you have? The very first one, if you see, again, under each sub drivers, you have got five possibilities around. The very top possibilities, if you look at it, the department is totally decentralized, highly fragmented. Even within the organization, you will find everybody is doing their own procurement around. So that means you don't have a word. It is a no practice at all. It's a very poor practice. The highly good practice would be highly centralized procurement. But we're talking of aggregation. If you're able to aggregate the volumes, we're able to plan better. So naturally, that's become the best practice. Sometime I can understand, depending on the DNA of the company, you may have to go through the hybrid. But again, in a very broad sense, I'm trying to say, what is the worst practice and what is the best practice? Next one, I'm taking the executive support set up. Does your executive management support set? Even the top management doesn't know about procurement, what procurement does, except they only have an idea that you guys are buying at a cheap price. If their mindset is that you guys are only there to procure at a low price, that means they don't know your strategic role at all. So that's, again, a gap, big gap, I would call it out. And those were the best practices. The top management is really in there. So that's important. Best practice, if I look around, no best practices. Objective exists in the CPOs. In the CPO list, there is nothing that this year, I'm going to implement these best practices. While a good company will have the best practices, they say, guys, we are weak on this, and we need to improve on this. This is what we need to change. So you get the last points. You know. Procurement policy. Some company, there's no policy at all. The policy is only price, nothing more. But then there are good companies who have a documented current price. If I've got 40 people, 50 people working in the office, I need a consistency. So that means there has to be a policy at all. The next comes the delegation of authority in organization. Do they delegate something? Some are very author authoritarian. They don't even delegate anything down the line. They want everything to be controlled and cleared by them. That's important. Procurement authorities. So authority for procurement department does not exist at all. They have to go to either finance people or to go to summons. So this is where it's also become the dimension for the best practice. Record attentions. Are we able to keep the records around? As you know, in most of the company for audit purpose, you have to keep the records but I, I know in the past, I remember seven years, but in the Indias, I see around 10 years people are keeping it up. Business continuity plan. Do we have a plan for that? I have got 20 suppliers. All suppliers are from one region. Tomorrow there's a strike in that. Flood comes in. Will this disturb my flow? Will this disturb my line? So you have to ensure the continuity plan. That means if worst scenario happens, how are we going to work? So that's important. Around This is why you'll see again, no such plan exists. And the best practice is the last one in the document, formal BCP existed. Goods and service standards. We're buying goods, we're buying services. Do we have a standard for them? And buying computers, fine. What are the specs of the computers? What type of standardization exists around? So if you don't have any standards, 
So we get a request from one department, they put us one standard. Another department comes to us, we have a different specification. So we need to come up with standards. Around. Empowerment of business units. So that means business units, they can carry on working, but no spend delegated outside the procurement department. We want all the aggregation of procurement at one place. I know sometimes they, the business units want to do themselves. They don't have a faith in the procurement around. These guys, for oh, you guys will delay it. You're not adding any values. So that's the mindset of the people around. So we have to change the mindset and we have to prove that we are able to add values once it goes through us. Processes, forecastings, cost reduction plans, negotiation strategies, competitive bidding plans, PO generations, spend profiling is very critical. Around. I'm spending money. I might have spent $200 million, but where's the money going? Who are the key suppliers? Are they critical suppliers? Are they routine suppliers? Are they bottleneck suppliers? So those profiling has to be done around. And profiling also in three dimension basis. RFX, it could be RFP, it could be RFQ, whatever you talk around, RFI. So we need to plan that also. The next comes the tools and systems. This is one of the big drivers to us. We need end-to-end -end sources to pay applications, contract flow, contract management around. How do we manage the contract? I know we can do with the manual system, but I would be very happy if I'm talking again on the size of the company. When I come in this office, as I was used to it, because my turnover used to be around $5 billion in terms of procurement in the previous company in the UN. So we'll come in the morning since I was a chairperson, I could know where the problems are. You want to know everything online. Contract life cycle management, who are behaving well, who are doing bad, keeping a record of all those things around, able to track the performance around, which are the ones skipping the milestones, contract templates, everybody has to follow, standard contract templates. If any change has to be done, it has to be clear. Next one is e-sourcing part. I think this is becoming very, very important around. That means I should be able to get, as I said to you, even government of India and the new financial rules, they have changed it. They're encouraging it and making it mandatory. All the offers should be received online. So that means you have no corruptions. Everything comes online. All information goes through online. And you're able to make the green world also around. E-auctions. This is very, very important. Here also, the government of India has taken the lead. Just if one month back, March beginning, 2017, e-auction, or you could call the reverse auction, is one of the tools. And I'm working with one of the state governments to implement this. You can imagine when the government is changing, the private sector certainly has to change where we can use the reverse auction, how can we use it. So to me, this is one of the best practices. External website, intranets, are we allowing our suppliers to connect with us? So those issues are the procurement cards. I know, I think very, if I can count with fingers who are using the P cards, people have no confidence on the staff. They think they will misuse it. They'll spend money on themselves. I remember in 1999, when I moved from Copenhagen to New York, some of the low ID items, which we were calling as less than $2,500, we used to have 15 steps. And I cut it down to just one step, P cards. The process cost became more or less very jilch, I would call it. So again, this is the best practice. Requisitions to PO systems, RFX templates. I'm moving a little fast. But never mind, because the document which I have will take me two hours. It could have taken a whole day, but I want to walk through the key points now. Supplier relationship management is the most hot subject nowadays. And we have learned a lot from this subject from Japanese. You see all the auto companies in Japan. 
and same in India and US, wherever they are, SRM is very important to them. Relationship with the supplier. At the end of the day, they are the one who are giving the goods to you. So don't treat them like a dust. Don't treat them like a doormat. Relationship, relationship. So you need a right attitude for the relationship also. Third party research in the market intelligence. So sometimes it's good to do market intelligence. Has new supplier comes into this business. If you are busy, you can outsource to someone who can do for you the research part. The colleges could do, the universities could do that research part you in your areas who knew have come up around. Contract labor management system. I think you know very well nowadays because the work is moving up and down. Today I've got a big workload. Maybe after six months I may not have. So you need a contingent labor around. So those contingent labor is becoming a part of it. Now how do we manage it? So same thing can happen in procurement also. Today I've got 100 people. After six months, I need only 50. So I need a contingent labor also. As well. The tail end, tail end, tail end. As I said to you, at the end of the day, people are the drivers. Do we have any certification program in-house? Do we have... I know some people do ask me this certificate. Why, how does it help me? I've done MBA. But you all know very well in MBA, it is a very generic. Supply chain management is only one chapter of the whole operations. But in this case, the certifications, which are the global one I will call around, they basically assess your complete knowledge from end to end. So that means you have a, you are not a narrow person knowing only one subject, only sourcing, only supply management. You know end to end. So in the process, you are able to add value to the process. Category and commodity training, I think one, if I'm a category manager of IT equipment, I'm a category manager of, let's say, making the fuel filters or something in an auto company, I must understand my category as well. I'm buying computers, but I don't know how computer works. So that means there is something. You know, the category knowledge is important around as well. Customer engagement. This is where we call the function of procurement or supply chain is becoming a cross function. Obviously, you can't be expert in everything. You need to involve the customer for whom you're working. Get their input all the time. Have a regular meetings with them. Learn from them. So that gives a confidence to them about your role as well. Your own employee engagement. Are we engaging with them to improve the new practices as well? We are, I'm just head of the department. I plan something, but I have to involve my employees as well. General trainings, job qualifications have to change. I know some companies still, I know they come to us advertising their job. They were designed four years back, five years back, should change with the time. Now the focus is on technology, the focus is on SRM, the focus is on strategic sourcing. So change your those requirements as well. Performance management. You don't have any performance management. I know you do have performance management for giving you the the bonus in the end of the year or your raise in the end of the year, but other performance in a real sense. So I think one needs to come up with the right KPIs, real performance indicators around. Have you come up with something innovative? If you're not come up with any innovative except doing the same work again and again, I think that needs to be encouraged around. Performance objectives. Procurement trainings, training plans. Next come the customers, engaging the customers. Engage, having the instruction manuals. If you have no procurement instruction manual, your customers should know how to procure. They should be given the complete details around how to make an acquisition. What information should go into the acquisition? We have only told them, guys, send us a requisition one, one line. We will do the procurement. But we need to give instruction manual. Tell us what you want, when you want, how much is the lead time, what quality controls you need around. Develop instruction manual. So that's again a best practice. I would look at it. Customer surveys. This is another best practice I would call around is do surveys for whom you serve. You might be thinking I'm doing a great job, but are they happy with your function? If they are not, then certainly something is missing. Relationship. CRM is also important. 
build the relationship with them. Then give the performance status reporting. Suppliers. Approved supplier list. If you go down to a company, you ask them, guys, show me the approved supplier. They say, we don't have any approved supplier. We have all the people who come and make a request. Everything is piling up. But we don't have any approved supplier list around per se. To me, that's a worst practice. But then the best practice would be the formal, current, documented, approved supplier list exists and ensure 75% or more than that spend is through that. Supplier qualification program. Now here I've seen companies, I mean, okay, that may be little exaggerations. I happen to work with the company, they have 350 questions. So before they even select the companies, they'll ask the company to give us the videos of your operation. Consultants will look at it, give their comments around before they really put them into as a partner company. Supplier scoring. So this is another one. Supplier tiering. So you need to again categorize the supplier. If today I find a good supplier, but I cannot give the complete business overnight. I'll take them as beginners. Okay, you are taken up, you have preferred supplier. But then that preferred supplier once is able to do a good business with me for next one year, two years. I move from preferred to certified supplier. And then if I find they're certified, wonderfully job doing well, they become my partners. You need to categorize them. If you don't have any categorization, all are lumped together as one. That means that's not a good practice. Rationalize the supplier. Big is not beautiful. Keep rationalizations. At the end of the day, you want to aggregate your procurements. So rationalization is very important around. Escalation and corrective action, supply recognition forms. Performance, you have a dispute. How do you handle it? Do you have a guidelines for that? So this is another area of, again, the worst practice and the best practice. The risk levels, contract turnaround, performance. So in short, if I look around, if I call a company as a word class, what does it look like? I'm just summarizing the whole story into these eight or ten bullets around. Procurement has a seat at the table at the highest level of the organization. If you don't have, that means the top management does not respect you to the level. Procurement is responsible for all addressable external spend. Procurement is an attractive carrier within the organizations. People feel, oh, I should move into this function so I know my carrier is taken care of to the top level. Look at the company like Apple. The CEO is come from the supply chain, procurement supply chain. Nowadays, you see many examples of this type. People are moving from procurement and supply chain up to the CEO level. Procurement has a strategic influence. Everybody listens to them. Procurement strategy is an integral component of the overall corporate strategy. Procurement articulates a credible business case for increased involvement. So you, you're, the head of the function has to basically ensure that they are able to convince the top management that their involvement is very important. You are working as a driver in integrating the developing key relationship between internal customers and supply. I mean, said and done is very easy. But you need the talent to manage all this around. If I had to do the inter with different departments, I had to do the cross function, I had to lead them, I have to understand their function as well. Suppliers are integrated into the improvement process. So this is what summary it gives you. Again, converting the vision part, so you have the visions. So based on this, you have developed, okay, I'm weak on this, I develop my vision. Convert that into reality part. Converting reality means there's going to be cost. So that cost you have to justify to the management that the return on investment would be good. Broadly, when we look at the transformations, there are four areas around. You need good strategies, good technology, good process, good people. And this is what you saw when we were talking of the maturity model. Here again, it gives you the, any activity which is below the euro line. Routine ordering, invoice, back order, antiquated process. It doesn't add any value. You're a cost. You're a cost center. 
But if you want to be a profit center, you have to go about this yellow line. You have to go. Think of supplier management. Think of customer outreach. Think of strategic sourcing, budget forecasting, CRM, customer. Then you become a little bit profit line. So basically, to me, there are three lines, evolution. One, you are a cost center. Office thing that you are a burden to them. You are a big cost to them. Other one, they think, no, guys, you are very important to us. You are profit center. Any savings you bring, state pay hits the bottom line. The third company think, no, guys, you are not only the profit center. You are the center of excellence. So the evolution starts from being simple, a cost to profit to center of excellence. See, if I say I'm a center of excellence, people listen to my ideas. People think me as an advisor. Say, guys, can you give me advice? Can we do this? Even the designers and R&D people, they come and consult you to get the feedback from the suppliers. Because you are the interface with the suppliers. So best practices, I think we have already talked a few of them. So in broadly, I'm just putting up into the 10 headings around. So this, if you want to implement, I know it's not an easy game, implementation. You need to build up a cross-functional team. You can't do alone. You have to carry the people from other departments who are your customers together into this. So we need to build up a cross-functional team. We need to align our activities with the organizations. We need to write the right supply chain peoples. If you don't have the right people, you can't do it. Because normally I've seen people, procurement wise, they're not good communicators. They're not good in writing. They can work very hard, 14 hours, 15 hours. They're the last people to leave the office. But they're not able to communicate how they can add value to the organization. Establish key supply alliances. Manage the TCOs. The total cost of ownership. Manage compliance and risk. Optimize company's own inventory. You have a company inventory. How do I optimize it? I know one company came to us. They have eight distribution centers. Their inventory is around three months of the wholesale revenues. Obviously, it's too high. When auto companies have gone to 21 days, and this company is only providing to the auto company, and I was surprised when I saw three month inventory. Gather information on a timely basis. Establishes process, process, and controls. Now, these things, I mean, small companies can do with the manual process, but those companies which are big, with too many suppliers, they need technologies to do it well. So, I think I've already touched these points around. So, let's go down to the, I'll just take a few points around the specs part. To me, this whole journey starts with the specification. So I think we have to teach our people who are the customer ends how to write the right specification. We must make an operating documents for each one, guys. What specs should look in this? Obviously, we're looking at the functional specs. We're looking at the performance specs. We're looking at the quality specs. We're looking at the quantities. We also want to see the delivery part. We also want to see whether they need any backup service or any other information. So specs, which is part of your acquisition, should be built into that. So this is where when I said to you in the maturity model, we need to talk about our acquisition instruction manual for these people, for the customer. I've seen many companies, I go to the customer, how do you buy it? Do you have any guidelines? Have you been trained how to interact with procurement? No, it does not exist. So you need a wonderful practice for that. You know. Even when we're doing RFP, those who are dealing with solutions, I think I know some companies have seen around, they write down the complete story, what they want. If you're not the expert, then write down, let the other people who are answering you, never tell people how to do the thing, tell them what you want. Tell your final objectives and surprise with injury. Then they will come with injury. I know we were doing one project with one company on something learning leadership development program if they give us all the things they give us a broad ideas around and then we develop ours so this is where we feel designing an effective RF. outlines i think this again i just want to touch one line on this is again the best practice is there's a difference between shell and will should and would may and this 
So please be clear, whatever you're writing in your documentation or contracting, if you're writing for the contractor, use the word shell. Shell is legally binding, will may not be do. So if you are doing as a company, you'll say we will. But if you're saying the supplier side, supplier shall do this. So be very clear about it, the big, big difference from the legal angle. Again, on the supply base, innocent side, I said in the beginning, you have a big base, nobody cares. Excellence means you're reviewing them all the time. So you can see the top level and the lower level, the, the best practice is excellence part, where there's a continuously reviewing the database, you're trying to rationalize the database, and if those who are not doing well, you're throwing them out. Supply positioning, all of you know as a good practice wise, we try to, when we said about the spend analysis, the purpose of spend is to convert them into two by two matrix. You all know very well Peter Classic model. So that's based on this, you should come up with your own solution, your own strategies. Those items which are falling in this lower segment, where the risks are very low, amount is very low, is again divided from 80 and 20%. Automate, delegate, so bring technology there, bring catalog there. Just for your information, even Government of India has set up GEM, Globe Government Electronic Marketplace, which is a replica, which is a clone of Flipkart. That means even the government is thinking of this, and you companies have to go much faster on this. So this gives you action scenarios, long-term contracts, one thing you have to keep in mind, whenever you do any best practices, don't ignore the part risk money. Since somebody has done it, but that company's top management might be fully supporting it, their DNA is different, your DNA of the company is different, so do carry on the risk money. Let's say I know one company went into strategic sourcing, spent the money around, restructured the organization, and they took up some complex item, and they could not succeed. The management lost the confidence in them. So you have to identify the low-hanging fruit first. So risk management is very, very important around, I think, for everything. And the risk management you should do in the whole chain, starting from the needs till managing the contract. So in each activity, try to do the risk management. TCO part, we all know very well, I think, is not the price. The perceived price is the actual total cost around. The talent pool, I would only say around is the role is changing. The role is not just knowing about procurement processes. The guys come and join you guys, do this, do this, 10 steps. That is a clerical function. It's a multi-dimensional knowledge manager. You want them to be center of expertise. You want them to understand the evolution of technologies how the technology is moving because I'm working even at my age I'm working on a company on three-dimensional digitization three-dimensional digitization so maybe in some other session I'll cover more on that acts as a consultant holistic relationship management complex deals and you have to lead the chain you have to be a leader if you're a backbencher sitting at the back end Somebody will tell and fish you, as a leader, you have to lead the chain. And leading change is the most difficult because you have to carry people from your customer side as well. This is the digitization. You can see the digitization of the process, digitization of the actor also, and digitization of project or product also. As you can see, when I go to the flip card, I can see the product easily. That means the product has been digitized. Actor also is digitized. That means even if I'm there or not, Whenever my level goes below something, it can place the order automatically. So that means actor can be digitized, product can be digitized, the process can be digitized. It's again three-dimensional. So this is the way the world is moving fast. Time is not very far. The next frontier, the way I look around is the focus on value, value, value. Not the price. Total contribution of ownership. Strategic intent. Seek differentiators. So whatever you do, if the, your colleagues have been doing for the last 10 years, you're doing the same thing, then you're not different than them. 
If you want to be different, then you have to come with a new ideas, new approach, new solution. So you have to be visible as a star leader. Involvement in strategic decisions. The management should involve you in the strategic decisions. And that is only possible when you are able to contribute. If you are not able to contribute, they won't involve you. See if you are part of executive committee. The business skills. So it is not just knowing the procurement. You have to understand finance. You have to understand customer relationship. You have to understand wide gamut of different product products. So it's a cross function again. Procurement is aligned, intrinsically linked with all the stakeholders. This is where the word is more. Well, friends, I know this subject is big. Time was short. I went through some subjects very fast. But you have an access to all of this. But my request to all of you is, please, this subject is changing very fast. And if any questions, I think the next, we're opening the session for question answers. Please raise your questions and I'm happy to do it.